No, I have a question, and being serious, is his ego always like that, or was it always <laughs> like that when you were filming? I mean, I think it's I think it's gotten a little bit down, but it was kind of, yeah. A little bit down? Yeah, like, it's gotten, like, you thought you were the hot thing, and then you soon realized... <laughs> I, I, I am the hot thing. That he well. was not as hot. <laughs> no, Sam, Sam's ego, there's, there is, I mean, I've... One I've never billion. one in a billion. One no, in no, I I never met him um, before we started talking about this movie. But I had heard so many things over the span of about four years because we have a lot of mutual people in common um, in in the industry. And I had heard so many amazing things about him professionally, but also as a person. And when I met him, it was exactly what I had heard, and it was a really nice surprise. And what did you heard prior to walking in? I, I, <laughs> I'm trying to ask him different questions. Yeah, you know what, I mean? um, what I, had I heard about her? Yeah, uh, or about myself? Uh, <laughs> I, would, um, I would go with yourself first, and then I, I haven't heard anyone uh, speak about me, which is a good thing, I think. <laughs> oh, also a bad thing. Hollywood should probably be <laughs> noticing me by now. No, but I'm, I'm joking. With 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 regards to Lily. I, I mean, I was a fan of her work. I'd seen her work, The Blind Side, namely Mirror Mirror, and uh, you know, I, I, I was I was a fan, um, and so the fact that she was a part of this project made me realise that you know I trusted the director um, and his his sort of taste in in great actors. Um, <laughs> um, but no, no, it, 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 she was very down to it. I didn't have any expectations, and I hadn't. Heard that many negative or positives, not, not, not in a bad no, way, I'm but, um, <laughs> but no, I just, I just, we've already shot the movies. You can say I was very now excited. I was very excited to meet her. Yeah, and I, I was thrilled too. to actually realise that she met my non expectations. There you go. All right, now I'll be serious and jumping into the film. Um, mm. When you guys, obviously, things change along the way. Scripts, you know, when you guys first got the script to when you got on set, how much changed in terms of like adding your voice to the dialogue. Do you know what I mean? Like, how did it get tweaked for who you are, if at all? Well, that's part of the beauty of what Christian allowed us to do, was we were able to improv so much, and he really wanted our input. And Juliet, the scriptwriter, we had sit-downs where we talked about music, we talked about voice, we talked about accent changes with, like, um, like the British accent in terms of how I would change from a teenager into an adult, and, like, the words I would stop using. I mean, we really had a lot of collaborative um, trust from, from Christian to do that. And even daily on set, we would just be changing things around. I mean, the script was amazing to begin with, but the idea that they trusted us enough to take on our characters and actually just live on screen was amazing. Yeah, it got to the point where you obviously know your characters more than uh, the page does, weirdly. you know. And I think you, you start inevitably becoming that character. And I think both of us already felt a lot of similarities and a lot of parallels you know in our lives to our characters lives and I think we'd lived through similar experiences and so you'd sort of add you know minor details that would in the in, in the long run make it more realistic um, and more kind of personable uh, I guess and I think that's what I will say for this whole entire project it was very personable and it felt very intimate and very like we weren't afraid of sharing our feelings or our experiences and um, things that had happened in our lives and I, th I think we were a very very open and friendly uh, set mm -hmm. generally. One of the <laughs> things about it is uh, often when uh, you're getting ready for a role you're creating a backstory and you are trying to figure out the gaps that aren't maybe listed in the script with this mm -hmm. there's the backstory is literally the whole movie I mean yeah. you, you have so yeah. much of yeah. these characters so how did that sort of help you and uh, in, in creating and acting out in the scenes? Well for me um it was really interesting how we shot this. Sam was there only for a month of the filming. Like he was there, half, he left halfway through to go shoot another film. So we shot all the things where Rosie and Alex are together when he was obviously there. And when he left, it was all the times that Alex had left Rosie. And so for me, it was amazing to have had the experiences with Sam on and off set that we had had during filming, so that I had something to miss when he left. And she missed me. All. Rosie Alex, okay? <laughs> Let me set that straight. Um, no, but I mean, having not had ten year history with him, as Alex and Rosie had when they, because they met each other when they were, or I'm sorry, not ten, but like not having had a childhood with him, we had to create a history in order to have it as a backstory. So in filming world, 
we had a history already when he left, which is something I could kind of refer to in scenes to myself to have a backstory. So I, we kind of naturally it got created, I guess, along the way. So yeah. I had things to draw from. So I think progressively as we sort of went through the process of filming, like, I think we found little isms that, like little noise <laughs> that... Mm -hmm. Yeah. I sort of started making this noise <laughs> that I couldn't help myself but make, but like we kind of intertwined that into the script so that you know uh, there are there at the funeral, I think it's in the trailer. Um, there's a funeral and as she's sort of crying like, and I knew that at you know, as Sam to Lily, the one thing that makes her laugh was that noise for some reason. So I, like I just had the little teddy bear, picked it up and made a little fart sound. But it created a moment where I started laughing when I was crying, and I think that's so naturalistic. You know, sometimes you don't want to be crying it, it, to lighten the mood. You laugh, or you, you know, emotions just come out. And because we knew each other so well, we mm. were able to create moments like that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We we had our own little language as Sam and Lily, and I think we kind of brought that to life in a great way. I'm always curious about the way people like to work. I think I've probably asked you both this question before, but how has your process changed? along the way, uh, getting ready for a role, and I'm very curious about how each of you likes to work, and did it gel really well with each other, or are one of you more into a lot of takes, while one of you is like, two, let's move on? Well, um, I don't know, I hadn't actually really thought about my process as an actor that much until the movie I just finished, where sometimes we did 60 takes. <laughs> um, <Wow>. uh, <laughs> well... I worked yeah. with Warren Beatty and he loves to, to do a lot and I you know until you get pushed to your limit um, and then extend past that you don't know what your limit is and so with this movie in particular I guess Christian just allowed us to kind of freeform and go and if we wanted to do another take he'd be like go go do it because sometimes those were the takes where the magic happened or there I think we both were kind of along the same page of there was no I only do two takes and we're done like we both had so much fun that sometimes there was only one take, mm. like the whole scene in, in, when we're walking with the fortune cookie and like in the middle of the morning or at night, I guess. It's that was one take, and you kind of just pick and choose from that. And I think I think I speak on behalf of both of us when I say that we had a lot of trust in Christian. You know, he didn't sit behind a monitor in a tent miles away. He was quite literally a part of the process and and as much of the scene as. He could be, and you know the fact that he was getting his hands dirty and was really a part of it. If he didn't feel it, it you know he'd tell us and he'd say, "Okay, we need to do it again, but feel more or whatever it was." But his way of directing was very hands-on, and I think as an actor, you really appreciate, learn to appreciate that like, what a good director is, what a good actor's director is. Um, and I think, I think he inevitably brought out the best in both of us and, and kind of pushed us to our limits in, this, in a different kind of way but allowed us in, at times to make up our own minds so I mean it's kind of, that freedom you know is, is, is a dream I think to have that opportunity to have a say to be to make it a team effort you know it's really quite special uh, I'm very curious how early on how early on do you typically get to see your work in a movie uh, because obviously the editing is so key to the final performance mm -hmm. uh, because you could do one scene one way um, shoot it eight, you know, eight different mm -hmm. ways of delivering one line um, so I'm curious how early on did Christian let you see and was it a, are, have you ever been like in a really collaborative kind of situation where you're talking to the director or are you like just show me when it's done this was awesome for me because Christian really wanted my input and, and he asked me and I said well do you really want it or are you just saying that because I will give you notes if you want to because I love the whole process of filmmaking and he showed me um, some clips while we were still shooting I went to the editing little studio he had there and then um, when I went back to Toronto to do some things for some other movie he showed me the first edit and this is like probably almost a year to the till until it came out so it was the first edit and I saw maybe three or four progressions of the movie and he wanted my notes after every one so we talk on the phone sometimes for over an hour and a half and a lot of the notes and questions that I had he genuinely took to heart and some of the stuff he actually changed or was um, enlightened by some he disagreed with and I was like great now I understand why you didn't do that or you did and they wanted to take out a scene they ended up keeping it in and it was really amazing to see that he really wanted that and um, to see that my opinions were being heard whether they were agreed upon or not as a 
young person who wants to be a filmmaker in different respects, it was a great learning experience. And when you see the end result and you're like, oh, I kept that in. He, he like, he heard me. It was a, um, a really cool experience for me to have. Mine was a little different. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, purely because we, we talked about this a lot, um, actually, that I, I think as a as an actor, anyway, um, I, I definitely really enjoy the, the filmmaking process, but I think sometimes that I get too attached to projects and moments, and therefore if if there's, there's a reason that he, he didn't want to include a moment, I, I kind of didn't want to know about it, and you know, then feel upset, and so a part of me was like, look, I, want to, I don't want to see it until it's done. There was a point where he was like, Sam, seriously, come and watch this early edit, and I was like, no, I, I'm going to be strong, I'm going to stand by it what I believe in which is I'll see it when it's finished and that's that and I saw I think I saw it twice and yeah. well we watched the first one we earlier it in, together yeah. um, before whilst we were doing ADR but um yeah uh, it's it's different for everyone and uh, but I think a part of me would with you and Rosie I think I understand why you'd want to be a, so part of it you know and I think Alex kind of needed to be able to let it go. I was still in character. That's there it you was. Go, yeah. yeah. Uh, one of the things about this, I, I think myself, uh, not to put myself in the interview, but I think everyone has gone through that young love thing where you know, you know what I mean, where you're not mm. sure if you should make the move, what's the right you know, <laughs> thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure this is a, what's been the reaction after you screen this for people in terms of, I'm sure you must be getting a lot of people's stories being like, oh my God, I relate to this because this happened to me, or, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, when I read the script, I saw Rosie as someone that could kind of be any woman, any young woman, had a little bit of that Rosie quality in them, you know, there, there is an awkwardness to her that I think we all share, there are awkward moments that she's been in that a lot of people I know have said, oh my god, I can't believe you filmed that, but I, I had that happen to me, or a friend of mine ha had that happen to me, and I think that's kind of the beauty of the realness of the, the story and, and the awkward moments that are funny. And I, I, I went to Tokyo to promote this, and a lot of the young women there said, you know, we really relate to Rosie because we're quite shy when it comes to speaking up in, in love, and we kind of like the guy to make the move, and they related to Rosie in that sense, but also empowered them because ultimately when Rosie ends up speaking her mind, they were inspired by that. So it was interesting in different parts of the world how they react differently. Yeah, I, mean, I don't necessarily, I haven't had people kind of come up to me and sort of talk to me about their personal experiences, but I know for a fact that a lot of people that I've spoken to have seen the movie and have related to aspects of it, not sort of pinpointing any specific moments though. Um, they're just kind of going, oh my God, this thing happened to me, or I was in love with my best friend. I mean, I think we've all had a, a best friend. That, I mean, that was totally a tactic of mine, I think, growing up that I, I'd... I'd grow really attached to these girls as friends and be a really good shoulder to cry on and then try to swoop in. Failed miserably, um, <laughs> but nonetheless I tried it. <laughs> and I wouldn't advise it. Been there, done um, that. Yeah. I don't think yeah. anyone's gone through that. <laughs> yeah. never. This never happens. Never. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's an anomaly. Um, yeah. Before I run out of time, I, I, I have to touch on uh, working with Warren because I am so excited First of all, there's like nothing seen of this movie. Were you, were, did you film this whole thing on sound stages? Because I haven't. Oh, no. ha that's the amazing thing. I said beforehand when we talked about locations of where we were going, I said, that's in the heart of Hollywood. And we, like, no, don't worry, there's not going to be any paparazzi. I'm like, really? And there was maybe one day where someone caught a picture of me in a red dress, but that was, there was nothing. And I'm shocked. We shot it all in Los Angeles. A lot of it we did do on sound stage, but. A lot of it was on location too, and it's in the middle of Hollywood, and nobody saw anything. Yeah. It was really, really exciting. <laughs> I don't know how it happened. I'm, I'm a huge. I mean, listen, he's. He, I can't. I'm very happy he's finally making this story because it's something that he's wanted to make for a while. Mm. What was it? Can you just talk about your reaction to reading the script? And for people that don't know, like what it's about, who you play, just some basics. Um, I really can't speak that much on it because of the secrecy of, of it and to save the integrity of people not knowing, but it's 1950s Hollywood. It involves Howard Hughes and a young girl who comes into Hollywood to become an actress and her driver. Um, and it's just kind of about the perils and trials and tribulations of, of um, Hollywood at that time and a lot of other stuff. 
Um, but uh, very few people still to this day have read the script. Obviously, actors have, but sure. um, I, yeah, I will never forget that experience. Um, reading the script, that was also one of the most collaborative, amazing experiences to work with him and change things and input my own, uh, have my own input in it. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited about it too. I mean, hmm. I'm very proud of it. It was a terrifyingly amazing growing experience for me. Uh, I, yeah, I can't imagine, and of course I have to ask you, uh, the, some huge franchise you might be in is coming finally to a mm. close this year. What, yeah. What's it been like? Uh, I'm sure having so many like, young fans and people being so emotionally wrapped up in the story. Uh, <laughs> like, I would imagine, what's, it, what's the process been like for you? Do you know what, it's so strange because as much as it feels like it's the past now, it still feels like it obviously it's very much still, still going on. Like, the thing is because we finished filming it in June and we're not filming anymore and it's kind of long gone in that sense uh, that I've kind of forgotten about it. So I still am surprised when people come up to me and go, <laughs> hey, Finnick, right? Oh, no, what? Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, oh, more to come. Um, but it is really exciting and I, I definitely think. You know, I, I hold humongous uh, amounts of trust in, in um, Francis Lawrence. I know that he won't disappoint. You know, I, I'm, I'm very excited for this last, the last conclusive chapter. Um, but I'm also excited for fans to kind of get their their uh, their next hit. <laughs> you know, the, the last hit, if you will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Know? Both of you, thank you so much. Thank Congrats you. on the movie. It's a pleasure to see you both again. Lovely to see you too.